Hello everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com, and in this video I'll be taking a look at the MadCats Control-I mobile gamepad for Apple iPod, iPhone, and iPad, as well as the Micro Control-I, which you can get for $49.99 from MadCats.com, while the bigger version is $59.99, and I would like to thank MadCats for sending this over to me for review. If you couldn't tell by the title of these controllers, they are mobile gamepads for your iOS devices and it allows you to play your games using these controllers instead of having to use your touchscreen. First, let's take a quick look at the packaging for the Micro Control I and see what comes in the box. And of course, you do get the controller itself, some manuals, some batteries, as well as the attachment that actually holds your device. For the regular Control I, you get pretty much the same things, although the actual attachment for your smartphone is a little bit different in terms of how it attaches to the controller itself, as you can see right here. Let's take a quick look at the Micro Control I itself, and as you can tell, it very much resembles that of an Xbox controller. And for me at least, the overall size of this controller is a little bit small, so for the majority of my review, I did take a look at the regular sized version instead. I really like this layout, and the buttons themselves feel great when you're pressing them. The analog sticks are just a little bit stiffer than I would like, but they still work just fine. The triggers on the top are pressure sensitive, but most games don't really take advantage of this. And now, let's take a look at the larger control eye, and this fit much more comfortably in my hands, so I definitely prefer this one a bit more compared to the micro control eye. The buttons still feel great overall, but I really do wish that the analog sticks were a little bit more loose. Before we go ahead and take a look at the pairing process, here is a quick look at the user manual for the larger control eye. What's kind of cool about this controller is that if you use a cable or airplay to mirror your screen's device onto your television, you can use this on your couch while you're actually playing, playing the game, rather on your actual TV. So you could use your mobile device as basically a console. So this controller pairs to your device through Bluetooth and I've already actually paired it. So once you turn on Bluetooth on your iPhone, for example, and then turn the actual controller itself on, within 10 seconds, it should automatically connect up. As you can see, I am using an iPhone 6 Plus, but it's able to fit inside of the little cradle arm here just fine, even with my candy shell grip case installed. Madcats does have their own app for the controller that lets you view compatible games as well as the actual buttons that you're pressing in real time in addition to seeing if there are any software updates but for some reason this app just does not want to communicate with my controller. I have no idea why but it has worked for me in the past. And now it's time for a quick demo of the controller in action. The games I tested include Riptide GP2, Top Gear Extreme Parking, Crazy Taxi, the, uh, the newer one that I don't really like, uh, Beach Buggy Racing, Nitro, Lily, Angry Birds Go, Crossy Road, as well as Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transformed. You already saw a couple of the games, but here is Crazy Taxi and it works very well with the controller. I definitely recommend using that game with the controller. Here is Beach Buggy Racing, which works rather well as well, although the physics in this game are a little bit weird to me, so using a controller still helps. Here we are taking a look at Nitro. Now the D-pad in this game worked fine, but when you're using the left analog stick, turning left actually goes right while moving it to the right makes your car go to the left so seems like the developer had something to work on. Here is Lily which worked rather well as well and here we are taking a look at Angry Birds Go which worked just fine with the controller and now we're taking a look at Crossy Road all you have to do is use the A button to cross the road you could use a d-pad or the left analog stick to move your character around and last but not least, we have Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transformed, which is one of my, I would consider this a benchmark game for using with the controller because you can use a lot of the buttons for different things and use the R1 button to accelerate, the L1 to break the game. I don't believe supports pressure sensitivity. I know I put a little bit of pressure on the button and it either worked all the way or not at all. So this game doesn't really support that. But I believe that for all of the different games that I tested, I definitely enjoyed using the controller with this game the most. So to conclude, if you are somebody who plays games quite a bit on your mobile devices and you want something that makes the experience a little bit more traditional and that gives you a little bit more screen real estate on your display since you don't have to actually use the virtual buttons for games, these are, I believe, the best way to go so far. Some options have it so that you have to take your phone out of a case and slide it into the controller itself. Some controllers might be missing certain features like analog sticks or the triggers. But this controller seems to have everything that makes gameplay the most ideal experience you can get so far for mobile devices. The smartphone cradle seems very strong and it happens to hold my iPhone 6 Plus with the case installed without any issues. The normal sized control eye feels very nice in my hands to where I can comfortably hold the controller and actually enjoy the games. 
And I would even go as far as to say that I think that these controllers are fairly affordable. $60 for the larger control I does seem a little bit high, but given that this really does make the experience a lot better for you when you're playing games for mobile devices, this might be worth it to a lot of people. And that is it with this video. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback about this or anything else, feel free to leave those down below in the comments area. But that is it with the video. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you all very soon.